Right, uh, amino acids, very important little molecules. They pretty much form the basis of all uh, of all life on Earth, um, so they're reasonably important. Um, they are the monomers that are used to make proteins. Uh, I'll go through that in a separate video as to how you make uh, polypeptides, dipeptides, and all the rest of it. Um, but amino acids, um, in general, they have a generic general structure. The general structure is centered around a carbon. Um, that carbon has a hydrogen attached to it, and then it has three other parts. It has a carboxyl group, and this isn't a displayed formula. Um, I've condensed the old uh, OH there. But we have a carboxyl group here, we have an amino group on this side there, and we have an R group down there. Now the reason amino acids are called amino acids is because this bit here is your amino group, this bit here is your acid, your carboxyl group, and so the name amino acid is there. Um, this R group here could be a range of different things, lots and lots of options. Um, this is the thing here which means that all amino acids are unique, it is their fingerprint if you like. Besides that, they all have the same generic structure. Um, your data sheet um, that you're given in the exam has a number of amino acids within it. You are given six. You can see alanine, aspartic acid, cysteine, lysine, phenylalanine, and serine. Now, there are many more than this, um, but the key thing to look at these is they all have the same generic structure. That's this. Just go up very slightly. You've got this CH here, the carboxyl group there, the COOH, the NH2 group, the amino group, and then the R group here, this bit on the bottom, this is a different portion which actually dictates different molecules. And you can see a variety of different um, different amino acids created by changing the R group. The most simple amino acid that you can get, which isn't shown here, but glycine um, is just like this. Um, and the R group is just a hydrogen. So that's the most simple that you can get and that's glycine. Although these six are given in the data sheet, the AQA could give you different options provided that they give you the structure, they can get you to use it. The key thing is that you recognize the, the molecule given to you, if not made explicit, is an amino acid by looking at the general structure there, the carboxyl group and the amino acid, uh, the amino group, and then you deal with it as is. So these amino acids, they have generic names, glycine, alanine, etc., etc. but you are, as is the case with organic chemistry, you are expected to be able to name these as organic molecules. Now this is actually very, very simple. Um, in fact, it's, it's incredibly easy. If they ask you to, to name um, an amino acid, it's absolutely the, some of the easiest marks you can get. The reason being that all amino acids are based around um, carboxylic acids. They have this COOH here, COOH, blah, 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 blah. and so as per normal carboxylic acids, that's where your uh, that's going to form the basis of the name and that's where your numbering is going to start. So within all of these amino acids, all of these shown, this here is your first carbon. You're going to count from there and you're going to form your usual ethanoic, propanoic, etc. You're going to have no smaller than two carbons because you have to have two carbons here. Um, so the minimum you're going to have here is ethanoic acid up to propanoic. This one here would be one, two, three, four, five, six hexanoic acid. And then you name as per any normal organic molecule. If you've spotted cysteine here with this little SH, which is what's called a thiol group, you are not expected to name that. You are thiol groups are not part of the AQA specification, therefore you're not going to be asked to name that. So don't start stressing about it. They could ask you to use it in various ways and manipulate it, but they're not going to ask you to name it. So your standard organic nomenclature UPAC naming convention stands true. Using glycine is a nice simple example. Usual things: cat our carbon chain, two carbons there. Eth is going to be there, we've got our carboxylic acid, it's going to be ethanoic acid. Our second carbon is where we've got the amino group, remember amino is attached to there, the rest of it's hydrogens. In this case, we've got two amino ethanoic acid. You could go down here, where was it, this one here, we've got diamino, number it as such. Use the same convention though as normal. Um, it's probably worth adding here, you don't need to learn any of these uh, individual amino acids, okay? Um, just use what you're given um, and work with it, manipulate them, do not learn them though. You're given these six um, and, and use whatever else is there. Dependent upon, uh, this is a good time to mention this, dependent upon what the R group is, it's not going to be the case for glycine, but for a lot of these, um, you will actually find optical isomerism is present. This one here, for example, in alanine, you've got a carboxyl group, You've got what would be a hydrogen there. I've just scribbled that 
hydrogen out there, it's a bit rubbish. So you've got one, two, three, four different groups attached around this central carbon there. This therefore becomes a chiral carbon, a chiral center, and you can therefore draw enantiomers as such. So they can pull lots of different organic topics together within this amino acid. It's quite a simple, um, short little topic, but there's lots of scope for um, sort of breadth within it. So just watch out for optical isomerism. The last bit really, and it's as I say, it's quite short. The last bit to, to really touch on is um, is this ionic form um, that can that can exist within amino acids. So if I take the most simple one, um, which was, in fact, I'll just do the generic form. So just do our really basic, and we'll draw this out properly. Really basic general structure with our R group there. This is our amino acid. Lovely, lovely, lovely. What we find is that near uh, what's called the isoelectric point, um, and an isoelectric point is a pH um, whereby the charge of the amino acid has become zero. Because what you'll find is that pH can alter how the amino acid looks because we have an acid group here and we have a base group over here and therefore they can act as such acid donate in protons and bases except in protons and depending upon the pH you can therefore see this expressed in its acidic form or in its basic form and I'll show those in a minute. However, at what's called the isoelectric point which is a particular pH you're not expected to do any calculations or know about what the pH is and it needn't be pH 7 by the way but it's a pH for which the amino acid exhibits both its acid and its base properties and essentially what you find is it donates and accepts protons at once and that means its structure changes slightly and so what we end up with is the carboxyl group has actually deprotonated it has donated a proton and we have accepted a proton here at the basic end and so this here is called the Zwitter ion which comes from the German, Zwitter meaning hybrid, um, and essentially it's this zero charge. It's obviously cancel the plus there and the minus there. Now, the other form you could see here um, is, as I said, if it's not at the isoelectric point and it's in either acidic or in basic conditions, you can find this deprotonation or the protonation can occur. So, so I'm going to use alanine. Um, I've just taken this from the data sheet um, as an example for this. Now, what you can find is that if we have alanine or any amino acid, if it's in a low pH, if, if it's in acidic conditions, then what you'll find is it will act as a base. So it will become protonated. If it's in basic conditions, what it will do is it will act as an acid and it will become deprotonated. There you go. So how this would look. So using alanine as my example. In acidic conditions we would have our carbon, carbon there, over here, yada yada yada, so it's going to become protonated, that's going to be a nitrogen, not a carbon, so it's going to gain its lovely little proton there, so we end up with just this positive charge on that side, and this is the acidic conditions. If it's in the basic conditions though, it's going to act as the acid, so almost the same but that slight, very important change. This time, just the NH2 group, CH3. And on this side, we are just going to have the carboxyl group having lost the proton there. All of the amino acids are going to behave in the same way. The thing to be aware of, though, and this is very, very, very important, is if you have... Aspartic acid is a really good example, as is lysine. If you have two multiple carboxyl groups or amino groups, in these high or low pH conditions, you will find that all of those groups will be deprotonated, for example, or protonated. So, the case here, our acidic groups here, if we have basic conditions, our aspartic acid, both of these groups are going to become COO minus. If we have down here an acidic conditions and this is going to act as a base now lysine then we are going to find this becoming NH3 plus at both portions there. That's very 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 key. The same is not true though 
if we're dealing with these Vita ion, the isoelectric point, we wouldn't have find, so if there were, let's to use lysine as an example, if you had the two NH2 groups there, the two amino groups and the one carboxy group, you wouldn't find that all three would be protonated, deprotonated as, as is um, correct. The reason being then you wouldn't end up with an overall charge of zero. And there's a lot of maths can go into that to do with PKAs as to which one of those would be, say in the case of the two amino groups there, which one would actually gain the proton. Don't worry about that. Lots of confusing stuff can go into that. It's well above the A level. The point is, if we're dealing with high or low pH, you just bear in mind to look at the R group and adjust that as is. Don't worry about that though with this Vita ion. You're going to get simple, more simple examples with that one. Alanine, for example, or maybe cysteine um, or possibly even serine. Okay, so amino acids. Not a huge amount there. Lots of scope though to be asked different things. Optical isomerism, lots of naming and all the rest of it. There's Vita ions and the low and high pHs. Be careful there as well. Any problems, um, shoot me a message um, or comment or whatever on uh, Twitter, um, but hopefully that's been helpful.